Good morning students. We have discussed till now the how to check whether the given schedule is concrete serializable, view serializable. We have discussed about precedence graph, polygraph, all these things. Even we have discussed about if a gra graph is means if a schedule is concrete serializable, we said it will be view serializable. All these things we have discussed. Now I want to discuss what is a serializable schedule. We discussed about concrete serializability, view serializability, everything. If a given non-serial schedule like some concurrent schedule they have given okay and whether it is serializable or not we have to see a given schedule the schedule when i can say it is a serializable is if it is either conflict serializable or view serializable or both means a schedule which is either conflict serializable or view serializable or both because if it is conflict serializable obviously it will be view serializable but some schedules which are not conflict serializable but they may be view serializable so a schedule which is conflict serializable or view serializable or both then such schedules we will call them as serializable schedules then what is the advantage of those serializable schedules as I said earlier the serial schedules will never create any problem. Whatever the problems we are getting, we are getting with the help of non-serial schedules only because serial schedules are safe to execute. They are consistent in the output. Whereas non-serial schedules only, they may create the problem like dirty rate, lost update, all these problems. And sometimes they are not consistent in the output. So if we have a non-serial schedule, and if we can make it as a serializable, means by a non-serializable schedule, if it is a conflict serializable or view serializable or both, then we said that it is serializable schedule. If a non-serializable schedule is, is serializable, then serializable means it can be either T2 to T1 or T1 to T2 or T1 then T2 then T2. Then we can say that a non-serial schedule, if it is serializable, then we can say that it also consistent in the output. Okay. So if any non-serial schedule, if it should be consistent in the output, then it should be serializable. Those non-serial schedules are safe to execute. Okay. So with this one, we will stop the discussion about the concurrency controls. All this sorry, not concurrency control about the serializable everything. But I want to discuss what is the drawback of this. We are discussing about conflict serializability, view serializability, all these things. But what is the drawback with this one is, give me one second. What is the drawback of this one is, if you, when we are seeing the conflicts, all these things, see, we are, when we are checking the conflicts, When we are checking the conflicts, like we are saying that transaction 1 we have a read operation, there is in transaction 2 we have a write operation, then we are saying that read 1 is having a conflict with write 2 of A. Like that we are saying that similarly we have write 2 A and write 1 A. Like that we are saying the conflicts. But how we are saying the conflicts? When we are executing this operation in real time, when we are executing this operation, we don't know what are the future operations will come. That is what, right? Right now I am doing something, I don't know what will happen in future. So if we are executing any transaction, in a transaction if I am executing any operation, I don't know what are the future operations and what are the concurrent operations I will get. Because when I am executing transaction 1, I don't know what will happen in the transaction 2 after executing this one. But here we are assuming that we know the entire thing. But in real time, it is not correct. So, this kind of conflict serializability, view serializability, all these things are not practically possible. Because when we are executing, we don't know what will happen in future. So, to avoid that one, we have concurrency control concept. We have concurrency control. In concurrency control, we will use lock me locking mechanisms. Using locking mechanisms, we can solve this problem so let me discuss about the locking based protocols or lock based protocols
we have four types of lock based protocols like we have basic uh, two phase locking protocol we have conservative 2 pl we have strict 2 pl we have regress 2 pl like that we have four types like as i said we have four types of locking based protocols one is basic two phase locking protocol we have conservative 2 pl we have strict 2 pl we have regress 2 pl so all these things we will discuss one by one so now let me discuss about the basic locking based protocol then we will go for the two phase locking protocol first let me discuss about the locking protocol now what is going to be lock if you see any transaction we will do the basic two operations one is read operation we will do in any transaction and we will do write operation what is the meaning of read we are just reading the content and we are not, not interested to modify the content so that is what we will say read operation what is the write operation we are interested to read the content and also we want to when we want to update the content then we will use the write suppose let's take that i have a is equal to some 10 now i want to update it decrease 5 from it okay then what i have to do i have to take it the right and then i have to decrease the 5 from it so this is about the right means whenever we want to update the content then we were doing the right operation when we want to just read it then we'll just use the read operation so based on that one they have given two locks one is shared lock as i said it is a lock protocol lock based protocols we have two types of locks one is shared lock and next one is we have exclusive lock or sometimes some textbooks will call it as lock underscore yes this one will be called as lock underscore some x so it is a shared lock and this is exclusive lock when we will use the shared lock if we want to read any data item only for reading a data item then we will take the shared lock and we will read it and then we will unlock it are you able to understand if we want to read any data item only we want to read, read, read the data item then we will take the shared lock on it we will read it and then we will unlock it like how it is that shared lock on a data item a you read it and then you unlock it so this is what so if you want to read any data item you first take the shared lock on it read it and unlock it okay then next one is exclusive lock exclusive lock is we will take it for write up operation and whenever we want to perform any write operation on any data item then we will take the exclusive lock so exclusive lock is useful for both reading and updating the content okay so now i want to discuss if someone has taken the shared lock someone is taking a shared lock on some data item whether shared lock is allowed or not meaning is that someone has taken a data item for reading purpose can anyone else can take the read permission meaning is that a shared lock is applied on a data item can give the shared lock to someone else yes it is possible because both are reading the content only so if both are reading the content there will be no conflict but if someone is applied a shared lock on some data item is it allowed to apply exclusive lock or not no it is not allowed to apply the exclusive lock or i can exclusive lock is not allowed when already shared lock is applied are you able to understand on a data item already a shared lock is applied can i apply again a shared lock means i am giving the lock to someone else is it allowed yes if a shared lock is applied can i apply exclusive lock it is not allowed now we will discuss about the exclusive lock if exclusive lock is already applied can someone else apply the shared lock on it no not allowed if exclusive lock is already applied can anyone take this exclusive lock no it can is not possible only so with this one you can say that only if it is shared lock is already there we can give shared lock so that's what i am telling if a read 
operation is already doing, someone can also read it. This is not a conflict. Are you able to understand? Because share block is only for reading. If someone is reading, other can also read it. It is not a conflict. But what is this exclusive lock will say? If someone is reading, because this share lock is upright means someone is already reading. If someone want to apply exclusive lock means he want to update the content. Now we see the conflict. We have discussed that this is a conflict operation. Read and write is a conflict operation. So that's why it is not allowed. Now someone is already taken exclusive lock. Meaning is that someone has taken permission to apply the write operation. Now I am asking whether it is allowed to apply shared lock. Meaning is that can I give for read? No, it is also not allowed because this is also a conflict. Now someone is already taken an exclusive lock. Can I, someone else can apply exclusive lock, meaning is that he also want to write, this is not allowed. So these three are the conflicts, whereas read and read is not a conflict. So I hope you have understood what is a shared lock, what is an exclusive lock and all this diagram. So I hope you have understood. In the next class, I will discuss about the lock based protocol and what is the drawback of the lock based protocol and then we will discuss about the basic 2PL all the remaining like strict 2PL, conservative 2PL all these things we will discuss I hope everyone is understanding my videos if you have any doubts you feel free to contact me thank you